next song. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Let's worship God this morning. Let's forget about everything else. Let's put our focus, our heart on God. Amen. Let's worship Him the Spirit and truth this morning. Amen. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid. Amen. Let's sing it out. Thank you for the
discipleship class. We, we were initially going to have it on this Thursday by Zoom, but it's going to be on Sunday mornings instead at 9.35 uh, and 9.40. So if you're interested in the discipleship class, you can come uh, here at 9.40, or if you would like to, uh, for you, those of you at home 
if you'd like to watch on Zoom, just simply send me, text me uh, your email address, and we'll send you a, uh, a link to that, and you can be involved in the discipleship class. We've got some birthdays uh, coming up. Shanta Franklin's birthday is coming up on September the 10th. Mrs. Claudia Valdez's birthday is on September uh, the 17th. Rick Anderson is on September the 18th. Uh, Sheila Bolin is on September the 19th. Mm -hmm. And I get to get in there. I'm on September the 21st. So why don't we all stand together? Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday to us. Yes, sir. Our birthday is the 25th, and Mickey's is the 27th. Get out of here. All right. So you stand up as well. Uh, brother, brother Antoine Lane's birthday is on the 25th. And his wife, Nikki, is on the 27th. Man, I bet that gets expensive in September, huh? <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. Let's sing happy birthday. Let's go. get cool and uh, you get to be spoiled a little bit by your wife and family and all those kind of good things for me anyway <laughs> it's, it's, it's September and I'm sure that's all you other birthday babies of September have a good September as well now we got some anniversaries Abra, Abraham and Mariana Mat Matua Silva their wedding anniversaries on September the 11th Johnny and Linda Williams is on September the 11th and Leon and Lily Robinson is on September the 16th brother well, Leon, why don't you go ahead and stand? We're going to sing happy anniversary to you and your wife. And she's at home watching today. So uh, I guess, Ms. Robinson, you had to stand. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Leon, you, you ain't up to it. All right, well, let's just sing happy anniversary uh, for this morning. Raphael's going to come lead us in another congregational song, and then pa Pastor David is going to give us a special this morning. Mm -hmm. Let's let us sing this next song, Sweet Hour Prayer. Sweet Hour Prayer. Amen. Let's let us sing. Sweet Hour
it may. We have a home in heaven uh, for all of eternity. Friend, if you've never been saved, the greatest gift you could ever receive is a gift of Calvary's love. Salvation Amen. through the Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter number 3 this morning. Proverbs chapter 3. If we could all stand together, please, in respect of the reading of God's holy word. Proverbs chapter 3, and we'll begin reading in verse number 13. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13. Y'all are ready and excited today? Amen. Amen. I'm excited because it's the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. I'm excited for him. Excited for what he has. Excited for who he is. Excited for what he does. God is God. And I am so glad that he is. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad uh, that he is interested in his people. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 13. The Bible says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And the man that gain, get it, understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in the right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord, by wisdom, hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. Mm -hmm. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall thy life uh, so shall they be light unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee, done thee no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the forward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the just. God's people amen. say amen. amen. Surely he scorneth the scorner, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The amen. wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. And Father in heaven, again, we're thankful this morning for the privilege we have to gather together. Thank you, dear Lord, for your word and God, the instructions of your word, the love that comes through your word for your people and for those across the world that you want to reach and have become children of God. Father, we're praying that you would bless this morning and that you would speak to every heart. Use me as your preacher. Empty me of self and sin. And anything that would hinder the preaching of thy word and the working of thy spirit. And Father, we'll be careful to give you the glory. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May we see that. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. The message this morning is entitled, The High Value of Wisdom. The High Value of Wisdom. We live in a world where the, we, where the want of things is always before us. If you uh, risk going to the mall, you will recognize the Christmas marketing will be out well before Thanksgiving dinner. It is usually at Christmas time and birthdays where you are convincing children to narrow down uh, their list to that one item. What is the thing that you really want? What about you? What one thing uh, do you want most? What in life do you have to have? Often commercials can awaken us, uh, awaken us to our desires. Maybe there are things you just must possess, foods you must consume, or a relationship that you just must 
have? What is the greatest treasure in your life that you wake up thinking about, go to sleep dreaming about, and spend your day planning to get? It may be money, stuff, sex, success, or any number of things. The Bible tells us that wisdom is the treasure that is superior to all that we can set our hearts on. Y'all with me this morning? Amen. Solomon tells us in Proverbs 3, 13 through 35, to seek wisdom first above all else. When Solomon wrote these words, he encouraged his son to commit to studying this book. Jesus is the source of wisdom. We're to seek him, the pearl of great price, above all else, and all these other things will be added uh, unto you. If we set our supreme desire on things, even good things, it will be disappointing. It may even wreck our lives. But when we set our utmost desire on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can enjoy these other things as gifts that cause our hearts to praise him for providing them. The high value of wisdom. The high value of wisdom is what we're talking about. Four important values are listed in this passage of what wisdom has to offer. First of all, wisdom will give you an abundant and eternal life. An abundant and eternal life. Let's read verse 13 again. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get it understanding. Then look down in verse number 18. It says, she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. Proverbs 3, 13 and 18, it, through 18 is a poem or a hymn about the supreme value of wisdom. As we have seen, Solomon has personified his wisdom as a beautiful woman. He says to get her above anything else, the source of wisdom, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we can know and pursue and treasure above all else. The benefits of wisdom are given here to motivate us to be with her at any cost. The idea is to get wisdom because wisdom leads to a happy and a blessed life. Again, verses 13 and 18 says happy and happy. We see that this idea brackets the poem happy in verse 13 and 18. This is called an inclusio. The passage is a hymn and is bracketed by blessing at the beginning and the end. Solomon gives a beatitude. Blessed or happy will be the one who gets wisdom. Blessed or happy is the one that seeks after it, that has it, that has wisdom in your heart and mind. The wisdom that only God can give. Happy is that man. Happy is that woman, that young person that desires and has wisdom. Let's look at verse number 13 again if we could. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get it understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Wisdom's profits are better than silver, gold, or jewels. Wisdom is better than money and stuff. Wisdom is better because it cannot be lost or destroyed. Matthew 6 says moth and rust destroy money and cars and clothes and stuff. Wisdom is better because we, as we see in verses 1 through 12, it shapes you into the kind of person who can enjoy all these things of this life in the proper context. Money can put food on the table, but it can't put people around your table. Money can buy you a house, but money cannot make your house into a home. Y'all with me? Money can give a woman jewelry, but money cannot buy a woman real love. Wisdom is better than money and stuff. Wisdom gives physical, spiritual, and relational blessings. Proverbs teaches us that wisdom creates a happy home, a loving marriage, and treasures that cannot be valued by marketplace prices. Riches will not ultimately make you happy, but Solomon says that wisdom will. Let's read verse 14 again. For the merchandise, that is the gain or the profit of wisdom, of it is better than the part merchandise, the profit, the gain of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She's more precious 
jasmine and rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Friend, you can have anything and everything in this life, but you'll never enjoy it without the wisdom of God. Amen. Wisdom Amen. is more important Amen. than anything and everything Amen. you can have in life. You need to get it. But, uh, 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 Matthew Henry describes the pursuit of wisdom like this. We must get it. He is the happy man who, having found it, makes it his own gets both an interest in it and the possession of it, who draws out understanding. So the word, it, that it, it, it is, who derives it from God, having it not in himself, he draws it with the bucket of prayer from the fountain of all wisdom, who gives liberally, who takes pains for it as he does who draws it. Uh, or out of the mind. If it does not come easily, we must put more strength uh, to draw it. Who improves in it? Who, having some understanding, draws it out by growing in knowledge and making five talents ten? Who does good with it? Talk about wisdom. Who draws out from the stock he has as wine from the vessel and communicates to others for their instruction things new and old that is well got into a useful purpose that is thus used to good purpose. So get wisdom. Get wisdom through the Lord Jesus Christ at any cost because nothing you could ever desire compares with wisdom. Be saved. Turn to him. Get Jesus at any cost because, again, nothing you could ever desire can possibly compare to, to Jesus. Wisdom is better than anything you can want. So grab her and do not let her go. Jesus, like the kingdom of God, the pearl of great price, the treasure in the field, is worth selling all that you own to get him. Is there something that you desire more than Jesus? What is supremely valuable to you? Even if you would not say it out loud in your mind, do you think, well, for me to be happy, of course I need Jesus, but also need a happy marriage. I, I, I need Jesus plus, and you fill in the blank. What is it that you must have in addition to Jesus? I need Jesus plus a promotion. I need Jesus plus the right kind of car. I need Jesus plus a house in the right neighborhood. I need Jesus plus romance. I need Jesus plus financial security. Somebody help me. I need Jesus plus the perfect Christmas card photo of a family. Whatever you put in that blank is what you treasure most since you have given it the same status as Jesus. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And there should be nothing in equal comparison to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is above everything. Jesus is more important than anything. Get him. Have him. Have wisdom in your life. Chase after wisdom. I need it. I've got to have it. It's more valuable than anything this wife, this life has to, has to offer. God is good. Amen. 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 He's good all the time. Let's look at verse number 16. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Peace. Wisdom gives generously. Notice she gives with both hands. She's got longevity in her in her left hand, in her right hand, and riches and honor in her left hand. Getting wisdom above all else will add long life, riches, a good reputation, and a pleasant course of life. It's one thing to live long. Wisdom promises quality of life. Think about that for a minute. What good is it to live 102, 110 years old and you living in sin, away from God, out of the will of God? Uh, I've lived a long life, but I'm miserable. i lived a long life, but I'm mad at everybody. i lived a long life, but, but, but I have no peace and no joy and no contentment in my life. What good is it, right. friend, when you got wisdom? Wisdom gives a, gives a quality of life in this present life, an abundant life that Jesus promises to all who are saved if you would but run to him. Abundant life that he wants you to have when you walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You get to live longer because of the wise and the pleasant paths you are walking help you avoid the pitfalls that lead to an early death. And you receive honor because those paths help you avoid things that will damage your testimony. Living a life of risky and foolish behavior is laid out in this book. Whether it be sexual sin, violent behavior, or not controlling your tongue may lead to early death or a ruined testimony. On the other hand, heeding this book's wisdom will lead to wealth since hard work instead of laziness, spending wisely rather than frivolously, and saving for downtimes will ensure that you have the provisions you need. Again, following the book's wisdom will generally lead to these blessings right now, but they will all, always ultimately lead to these blessings. Proverbs are promises that are usually true now, but as we've been saying, they are always ultimately true. You Amen. cannot outgive God. You Amen. cannot, you cannot uh, call God a liar. God keeps his promises oh, yeah. when we do uh, his word. Verse number 18, she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Wisdom is a tree of life. The tree of life is only mentioned in Genesis, Proverbs, and Revelation. A long and fruitful life is expressed in the figure of a tree. Much as the tree of life was a source of life in Genesis, so wisdom is a source of life. Proverbs speaks of the tree of life in 1130, 13, 12, 15, 4. So seek wisdom through Jesus primarily, and all these other blessings will be provided unto you. That tree of life, that abundant life, that rich life. Listen, you don't have to have $10 million in the bank to be rich. How much money would you spend for peace and joy and contentment and a happy home? How much do you think it would cost you if you could guarantee you had children that love you and all these kind of things? But the practice of proper, the living of wisdom, y'all quite on me. Am I lying up here? Why? The practice of wisdom will give you an abundant life that Jesus, Jesus wants you to have. Wisdom has a high value. Wisdom will give you an abundant and eternal life through Jesus Christ. And secondly, wisdom will give you a perception of how the world works. Look at verse number 19 if we could. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. The Lord Jesus created the entire world mm -hmm. by wisdom. So there's a wise order to the world. Matthew Henry put it like this. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth so that it cannot be removed nor can ever fail of answering all the ends of its creation to which it is admirably and unexceptionably fitted. By understanding, he has likewise established the heavens and directed all their motions in the best manner. The heavenly bodies are vast, yet there is no flaw in them. Numerous, yet no disorder in them. The motion rapid, yet no wear or tear. The depths of the sea are broken up, and thence come to the waters beneath the firmament, and the clouds drop down the dews, the waters from above the firmament, and all this by the divine wisdom and knowledge. Therefore, happy is the man that finds wisdom, for he will thereby be thoroughly furnished for every good word and work. Christ is that wisdom by whom the worlds were made and still consist. Happy, therefore, are those to whom he is made of God's wisdom, for he has the wherewithal to make good all the preceding promises of long life, riches, and honor, for all the wealth of heaven and earth and seas is his. Therefore, wisdom is so valuable. There's a wise order to the world. According to the pattern of wisdom, the world works in a certain way. So you can know the order and live by it if you possess wisdom. In a fallen world that has been broken by sin, this order generally works out now, but it will always work out later. Wisdom gives you the ability to perceive God's order and live by it. You must live by God's order. Amen. Do not try to live against the grain because that will wreck your life. You with me this morning? Yeah. Amen. If you live against the grain of how things work or how wisdom has ordered the world, it will go badly for you. Solomon tells us in Proverbs 6 that we can observe ants and deduce that hard work 
will lead to provision and laziness will lead to poverty. You can observe that a soft answer will always turn away wrath. Dishonesty in the justice system will destroy a society. I think we're seeing that today. That is just how the world works. And trying to live against its order is suicidal. This wise order is also Christ-centered. It points to him. God created the world through Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the one who upholds the world right now by his word. Also, all things are being united in Christ. All things are centered on Christ, including the created order. Since the created order is centered on him, you must know him to perceive and live according to the order of his word. The order is personal because he is the one who created and upholds the world. Wisdom through Jesus gives eternal life and abundant life. And wisdom's high value gives perception of how this world works today. If you want to know how to live, it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to know how to operate, it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. If our government is to act the way a government ought to act, it ought to be through the order that God has established in the other way. Wrecks the country. In any other way, uh, you rule your home other than the way of the word of God will wreck yeah. your home. Yeah. you got to know the Lord to know how the world yeah. works. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thirdly, wisdom will give you peace of mind. Let's look at verse 21. He said, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall thy life be, so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot uh, from being taken. Verses 21 and 22, Solomon appeals to his son to not let wisdom and discretion depart from his sight because they are his life. Verse 25, I'm going to read that again. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Keep the wisdom of this book through Jesus and it will keep you secure from the ruin of the wicked when that wicked comes. Solomon his point is that wisdom keeps you safe from sudden trouble. That is why you should get wisdom above all else. You will walk safely during the days of your life, and you will see, sleep peacefully at night. This is an appeal from a parent who desperately wants his child to be safe. Don't we all want our children to be safe? God wants us to be safe. He says you will not stumble if you keep walking on the wise path. Again, this is generally true now, but always true later. Verse number 23, thou shalt then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Wisdom will give you a good night's sleep without worry. Go ahead and say that one again. Amen. Now, how many of you are in need of a good night's sleep? How many of you laid in bed worried about this and worried about that? Wisdom will give you a good night's sleep without worry. You will sleep well because you've not done the foolish things that cause you to stay away worrying. You will not be afraid that you'll get caught or be found out. Hello. You will not have to lie awake thinking to yourself, what if she reads that email? What if he looks through my Facebook searches or messenger? What if he runs into that person? Who else knows about this? How can I make sure this never gets out? Walking in wisdom and avoiding the foolishness of sin will keep your conscience clear and your mind free from worry. Verse 20, verse 26. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. If you get wisdom, you will ultimately be safe because the Lord is the one who watches over you all day long. You ever worried about what something, what something can happen in your life? Do you not realize God is watching over you? Amen. He's watching over Amen. you every day. And when you walk in wisdom, that gives you a worry-free life. Yes, there's going to be problems in your life. Yes, there's going to be trouble that you're going to face. But you're not facing it alone because the God of heaven says, I'm right there with you. I'm going to stand alongside of you. I'm When the waters are deep, I'm right there when the fire is hot. I'm right there. God will take care of you. 
There's no question about it. And wisdom puts that confidence in your heart. I'm not walking around in fear. I'm not walking around in worry. I'm not walking around thinking about what something else is going to happen. What some new thing is going to come down the pike. God's got it. And I trust in Him. Wisdom helps us in those areas. In those areas. Can God get the praise as well? Amen. Praise the Lord. Wisdom is something we have to have. Yeah, it's something yeah. we have to get. Wisdom. 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 Yeah. You peace of mind. Boy, we need peace of mind, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We need peace of mind every day. Lastly, wisdom will give you God's blessing instead of his judgment. Boy, we need to say, I didn't say that. Okay. Yeah. Wisdom will give you God's blessing instead of his judgment. Look at verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. Devise thy evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Solomon moves from our vertical relationship with the Lord to our horizontal relationship with others. Wisdom teaches that if your vertical relationship with the Lord is right, your other relationships will be right in everyday life. You want a good home? Make sure your heart, your vertical relationship with God is right. Your home will be right. You, you want good friends? Make sure or treat your friends well and your friends will treat you well. Make sure that your vertical relationship is right. Your horizontal relationship will be right. That's just wise Bible preaching yeah, and teaching Lord. right there. Wisdom yeah. teaches that, uh, that if you if your vertical relationship with the Lord is right, your other relationships will be right in everyday yeah. life. One practical example of keeping this wisdom as Solomon has exhorted is being a good neighbor. You're not wise or in the right relationship with the Lord if you're not a good neighbor. If you love God, you'll love your neighbor. Yeah. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind and all thy strength and thou shalt love thy Thy neighbor as thyself. I was mentioning this in the marriage class, friend. Uh, you don't have a, we don't have a hard time loving ourselves. Amen. It's easy to love ourselves. Matter of fact, whenever someone says I got to, or somebody teaches I got to learn how to love myself before I can love somebody else, that's a bunch of malarkey. Because the, the bottom line, when you say you don't love yourself, you really just feeling sorry for yourself. Why? Because you love yourself and you try to bring some attention to yourself. We easily love ourselves. The biggest holy, unholy trinity that you have operating in your life and mine is me, myself, and I. We love ourselves. We want to take care of ourselves. God says take your eyes off yourself. Put your eyes on him and be an instrument to be a blessing to others. When you have a mindset like that, you're living in wisdom. Wisdom. Well, uh, wisdom. Wisdom is a good neighbor. Let me read verse 27 again. Behold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Solomon first mentions two sins of omission, failing to do good, and then he mentions two sins of commission, doing something bad. Solomon says to not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. This refers to giving something good to someone who deserves it or needs it. It, it, it when you have the means. This could be given a fair wage or money to a person in need. This could be a meal, clothes, a tool your neighbor lacks or some other physical aid. The wise are attentive to the needs of their community. They are the neighbors. Uh, they are the neighbors everyone wants to have. There was a communal life in the Old Testament where the people of Israel were called to care for each other's property. This is true in the local church as well. First John 3, 17 and 18 says, But whoso hath this world's good and see if his brother has need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him how well the love of God in him my little children let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth well I like when John says that let's not love in word and, and, and what, what did he say I've lost track but let's not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth in other words put some feet to your word Amen. Put some action to it. Love is an action word, by the way. Can I get an amen, amen. on that? Verse number 28. 
Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give what thou hast it by thee. Do not delay in doing good if you have the means. Do not delay in paying back a debt when you have the means to do so. Do not put it off because you are lazy and then forget. Do not put it off because you are indifferent or selfish. Do not just try to get rid of the person with an excuse like, I don't have any cash on me, or I have to take care of myself first. Right then, go the extra mile to meet the need. Failing to do good to your neighbor when it is in your power is foolish and wicked. It is sin. Yeah. Verse 29. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he hath done thee no harm. Solomon moves from failing to do good to actively doing evil. Do not plan evil against your neighbor who lives trustingly beside you. Do not accuse your neighbor without reason if they have not wronged you. This can refer to a false accusation for gain. You accuse them out of jealousy or you do so to get something that belongs to them. Solomon acknowledges that it is okay to seek justice if there is an appropriate cause. You may have to take a neighbor to court to stop some injustice against your family, but you do not do it out of spite or to get even with them. And Paul makes it clear that within the local church, the body of Christ, that it is not appropriate to take your brother to court at all, at all. Verse number 30, 31, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Finally, Solomon encourages his son not to envy the violent person who seems to prosper because of his schemes. There are times when it looks like following the Lord Jesus does not work like we think it should. And following the ways of evil can lead to short-term success. There are times in this fallen world when it may look like the path of sin is the path to getting what we want. Solomon acknowledges that some people use their power to manipulate and abuse others to get what they want. And they get it. You yeah. might be tempted to jealousy and to adopting their ways when you see their success. Solomon pleads with his son not to envy these people because in the end, the tables will turn. In the end, they lose. Judgment will fall. Yes, Lord. Judgment will fall. God opposes these people so they will not prosper forever. And God is for you if you belong to his son. And that means even if you do not prosper now, you will yeah. prosper later. Yeah. Yes, there's an order yeah. to the world, world where things work out in a certain way. Yes, in a fallen world, it does not always work out immediately. But God stands behind the order yeah. of holy men. And he will call for a reckoning on the last day. There will be a judgment when the order works out in the here and now. When fools are struck with poverty, lose their family, or irreparably damage their reputation. That is merely a foretaste of the ultimate reckoning that they will receive on the last day. And when the wise have plenty, a happy family, and good standing in the community, that also is merely a foretaste of the glory to come. But even if these things do not work out immediately, God will see to it that they work out in the end. God's in control, and God's word is true. Friend, I want to be on the right side, don't you? I want to be on the Lord's side, don't you? I'm not fretting about what the world throws at me. I'm not concerned about the, the pitches that the devil slings my way because in the end, I'm going to hit a home run. I'm going to make that truck and slide it into heaven. I'm going to try it into heaven because I won't have to slide because the ball is out of court because God, God is the one that swings the bat. God is good, amen, amen. all the time. Let's look at first up. 32. <laughs> Verse 32, the Bible says, For the forward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. Wisdom has its rewards, and Solomon holds them out to his son as a motivation to get wisdom. If you believe that wisdom can make good on these rewards, then you will walk in these ways. The Amen. devious person, the person who goes against the creative order, is attestable to the Lord. And judgment will fall on you if you do not follow the golden rule mm -hmm. to do unto others oh. as you want them to do unto you. Verse 33, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, mm -hmm. but he blesses the habitation of the just. Mm -hmm. This encourages and warns us that our affections, uh, our actions rather, affect 
more than just us. The parents' sins will affect the children, and the righteousness of parents trying their best to walk after Jesus will affect them positively. This is the language of Deuteronomy 20, chapters 27 through 30. There's a choice between life, blessing, and curses, death, in obedience and disobedience. There is a choice between honor and, and dishonor here. Verse 34, surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be uh, to the promotion of fools. Do not mock, or you will be mocked. Humble yourself to receive grace from the Lord. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Yeah. But he's also the wise son of Proverbs who humbled, humbled himself, took on the curse for us, and offers us the blessings of wisdom. He truly is more precious than silver, more costly than gold, and more beautiful than diamonds and rubies. Jesus is everything. Yeah. George Beverly Shea used to sing this song, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I would rather be led by his nail fierce hand than be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I would rather have Jesus than anything this world affords mm -hmm. today. Yes, riches can be great. Long life is something we all hope for. Having a good reputation is precious. Being able to sleep in peace at night is priceless. Oh, but you. Jesus is better than all of these things. Seeking above all else. Yeah. Chasing. Yeah. If you're not saved, be saved by him. If you're saved, walk with him. Amen. If you want an abundant life, walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Learn the word of God. Beg God for wisdom. To apply the knowledge of God's word to your daily life. Chase after it. Tell the Lord, Lord, I have got to have it. I need it. If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally, generously, and a great of not. He's not going to get upset with you if your number one request on your prayer list each and every time you pray is God give me wisdom. He wants you to have it. He wants it operating in your life. He wants you to have your best life now and in the future. Yeah. And it is by his precious word operating in your life. Friend, if you've never been saved, listen very carefully. You can never have the best that God has to offer until you know Jesus Christ. All the riches and glory and things of this life mean nothing without him. What shall a man give for his soul? What, what, if it, what, profit, what if it profit for a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall he give for ex in exchange for his soul? Your soul is valuable to God. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Jesus yeah. If Jesus has your soul, the life you live will be abundant. All right. I think yeah. about King Solomon. The Lord came to him and said, Solomon, what would you like to have? And, and he could ask for anything. He could ask for riches. Yeah. He could have asked for victory over his enemies. He yeah. could have asked for uh, 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 great armies, a, uh, a bigger country, all of these kinds of things. But he asked for one thing. He said, Lord, I need wisdom. Wisdom. God said, because you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give it to you. And all the other things you could have but did not ask for, I'm going to give you those too. Yeah. You may not have all the riches of this world. And you may not uh, have all the best of opportunities, but friend, if you have Jesus, hey. you have everything. Hey. All right. Hey. He's better than God. Yeah. And any, yeah. any blessings he gives you, you know who to give the praise to. Yeah. Yeah. Because everything yeah. comes well, from him. Yeah. 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 Let's have his bowed and eyes closed for a moment if we could. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I wonder this morning. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just here in the auditorium and you at home as well. As you're listening to this voice, I want to ask you a quick question. Number one, do you know that you're going to heaven when you die? Do you know that you're saved? No question about it. Know that Jesus is your Savior. Your sin is forgiven. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Heaven is 
is your home. If you know that, would you slip your hand up? Only if you know it. Honest to God. Honest to the Lord. God bless you. May put your hands down. As a Christian, you know you say, you know you're going to heaven. When's the last time you asked the Lord for wisdom? When's the last time you recognized the high value of wisdom? When's the last time you, you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I need wisdom to run my home, wisdom to raise my children, wisdom to work my job, wisdom to live in this life. Lord, I need wisdom. I know wisdom is generous. Wisdom gives me longevity and, and riches in this life, the true riches, the riches that are worth having. I need wisdom. Lord. Pastor, pray for me. I want God bless you. 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 God bless you as well. God bless you in the back. God bless you. I see your hands. How about you at home? Preacher, pray for me. Pastor, pray for me. I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I need to long for it. I need to beg God for it. I need uh, God to help me with this. I don't need to look at anything. I need him. God bless you. I see that. God bless you. Anyone else? Pastor, pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. I see that hand. Last question this morning. You're here and you're not 100% sure. And you at home, you're not 100% sure that Jesus is your Savior. That heaven is your home. Pastor, pray for me. Preacher, pray for me. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I'm tired of wrecking my life. I need Jesus to come over and come in and take over. And work in my life, I need to be saved. Friend, if that's you here today, would you slip your hand up? We'll certainly pray for you. Anyone here? Nobody's going to call you out or embarrass you. But we'll certainly pray for you. Anyone here that needs to be saved? How about you at home? Are you 100% sure that if you died this moment, that you open your eyes in a place called heaven? That you'd see Jesus face to face saying, well done. My good and faithful servant, into ye, into the joy of the Lord. Friend, if there's any question or doubt about that, I really want to encourage you to look to the Lord Jesus now. Turn from sin. Recognize that his death on Calvary's cross is sufficient to pay for all your sin. Past, present, future. Washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll give you a home in heaven, not because of your righteousness, but because of his righteousness that he will give to you and declare you as his. Will you put your trust in him today? Will you turn from sin and turn to the Lord Jesus as the only way to heaven and ask him to save your soul? Christian, will you beg God for wisdom and today? Would you pray for others for wisdom? Your president uh, for wisdom. Your pastor uh, for wisdom. Those in your life for wisdom. Pray for yourself. God, I need wisdom to apply this precious word to my life. I want good sleep. I want to sleep in peace. I, don't, I want the paths to be protected. I, 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 I want to have uh, whatever riches God would afford for me to have. And to take the five talents that he gives me and make them ten. I want Amen. to be profitable to the work of God. I want wisdom. Amen. I want wisdom. And Father in heaven this morning, we're thankful to be in the house of God. We're thankful for who you are and what you've done. We're thankful, Lord, for your goodness towards us and your good hand upon our lives. Father, tonight, this morning, rather, we're thanking you for what you provide and how you allow us to walk in this life with an abundant life because of the Lord Jesus Christ. May we not turn away. May we not leave uh, what treasure you want to give us behind to the side simply because we neglect to ask for it. We neglect to receive the wisdom that you want us to have. May we chase after it, get it, go for it, determine to pursue the wisdom that you want us to have, to live in this present life and to see the rewards and the outcome in the next. We love you today, Lord, and thank you. Have your way with us. Uh, bless the remainder of our day. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Folks, it's been good to be in the house of God. Good Amen. to see each of you uh, today. Praise the Lord for what he is doing. Can we give God praise this morning? Yes. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time. God is good. I got a couple of prayer requests for you this morning. Number one, do pray for uh, the Robinson family, Mrs. Uh, Barbara. Barbara Robinson is going to be going to the home to be with the Lord soon. So if you could just pray for that family, pray for a special grace, pray for some souls to be saved uh, in that family as well. If you could, uh, just ask for the Lord's blessings upon that, uh, if you will. Then uh, I need to have a, a Zoom meeting with church members probably uh, Wednesday night after church. We need to talk about some things about one of our one of our church members. And so uh, just be on the lookout for that. We'll have a Zoom meeting after uh, church on uh, Wednesday night. We'll talk to you about some things that you can pray about and, and, and be a comfort and a blessing to a, a brother that we have here in the Lord today, if you could. All right? Amen. God bless you. Have a terrific day. We'll see you next time.